Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, I'll show you a little bit about um, my new idea for Patreon. So I'll make a separate video explaining all the different tiers, but uh, my idea is as follows. I'm creating a database that has all the games I've played in my live streams, all the Blitz games, and uh, I'm going to have two separate versions of the database. One of which is uh, just the raw games that I'm downloading and collecting for you to look at. And uh, the other uh, part is going to include a shallow computer analysis of the entirety of uh, my games. Because this is something I do regularly uh, as part of my routine. So I want to demonstrate uh, and let you see how it looks like uh, inside of my, uh, let's call it a chess laboratory, so to speak. So uh, just want to mention that I'll, I'm also having some difficulties with the newsletter. And uh, for those who are uh, anticipating receiving it in a week, I apologize, but I decided it's kind of contradicting my goals at this moment i don't want to commit to any writing tasks i feel like uh, it uh, it's something that i will do once i'm becoming i'll become a little bit more um, let's say successful with my chess and and come closer or achieve my top 100 players related goal uh, hope you'll be able to forgive me those who already donated five dollars and are expecting the newsletter um, if you wish i'll refund you of course and uh, if you happen to like my idea here with this database then i'll be even happier so i uh, just wanted to mention that i'm going to be adding a new tier that's going to be after the simultaneous uh, exhibition and for those who want to receive this particular thing that you're about to see, um, then uh, I didn't decide about the price yet, but I'm thinking uh, that thirty dollars would be fair. So on top of the simultaneous, if you want to, in addition to receive a database that includes all of my uh, games from the streams with my computer analysis, then. Uh, you will just I'll just send you the database and uh, well hopefully uh, it will help some people improve so here it ha here's how it goes so I'm going to go to that window and uh, this is my chess base window and uh, I have some stockfish 8 that I uh, am renting for the, from the cloud it actually costs money but I'm doing it anyway, so it's not like I'm expecting to reimburse it. Yeah, I'm paying like, uh, I don't know, one euro per like, maybe um, 15 hours of using this engine. So I think I can, I can handle it. So uh, I'm just going through random games. So here's what I do. Just make the move. So here I'm white. I'm looking at the position. I also have my own repertoire in my mind. So I'm keeping track of the moves from the game. I see the engine evaluation over here. And then whenever I feel like uh, there is a point that I need to stop, then what I do uh, for my own sake of improvement is like stop and consider different options in this particular position in the opening. And just to save time, I usually don't put an evaluation at the end. I don't want to work too hard because I have like hundreds of games to look each month. But basically I decide which move to, to play based on what I see here in the cloud and what I see here with the engine and of course my general understanding of the position. So I feel like uh, the move d5 is a legitimate uh, idea here and uh, just press it and as you can see it's a new line 
and uh, this is like whenever you see a new line it will be it will be uh, the improvement for white or um, or black depending which color i play and uh, i'm mostly focusing on the opening part so let's see so 97 now i take queen takes and as you can see c4 whatever and we get the typical king's indian position so this is plus equals normally i don't put an evaluation to save time because uh, it's really taking some energy from me if i do it uh, every single time but i might do it in future months if uh, people actually invest in the in this computer analysis tier and um, then i continue with the game and basically after i haven't played d5 there's no point to correct the opening anymore because technically in every single future game of mine i'm supposed to play d5 rather than five castles so from now on um if i'm going to add games it's just going to be basically blunder checking from my point of view so i'm white so only if i make any blunders i'm just looking at it and uh, in this particular game it seems fine and he resigned then of course i save the game i'm moving on to the next one I'm pressing here next game and um, well now I'm black so moving on I'm doing the same exact thing I'm looking at the game and I uh, played b6 and uh, of course I remember the theory by heart at this point and d6 was a mistake I believe I think the, the correct move order uh, was different so what I normally do is of course I have the, the engine evaluation and the cloud but I'm going to also use the live book and uh, in this position so I'm going to check which move order I think is the most precise I have it in my analysis but I really like uh, to figure it out on my own from scratch rather than check out my analysis so that it will stick to my brain in the future so d6 feels like the right move but like my problem is that after a3 takes queen takes g7 is hanging so knight takes e4 is not so easy to achieve so usually what i do is uh, probably try to get the move order right castling is a move that should be checked i guess e5 is good for white yeah so i don't want to castle so i'm going to delete this move and uh, well d6 might be the right way so for some reason I was uh, I remember feeling like I was wrong during the game because it suddenly took with the queen but just uh, so you know the main theoretical move is knight f3 and I usually mention the main line or the main theoretical move if I feel like it and then usually black plays um, bishop takes e3 I think I can castle first but but then again you will get some form of queen takes e3 with bishop g5 I think not too sure though bishop g5 is an additional option I don't necessarily want to allow so after knight f3 I will, I will just play bishop takes c3 to force b takes turns out after queen takes that is uh, I can castle actually I, I have no clue if which move order is correct and this happens to me quite often and uh, the fact that I'm confused right now is actually beneficial for me because then there is more chance I'll remember it during the game and sometimes even though it looks like a small line I can spend like more than 10 minutes on a single position because uh, I feel like it's a good idea to just um, you know understand uh, the nuances so I can find it over the board the more thinking I'm putting into it here the less I will have to over the board and the more chances for me not to make mistakes so um, I need to decide whether or not I want to castle first take on c3 and uh, even though I mentioned B he has bishop g5 I sh probably shouldn't be afraid of it because in this position ed you don't have time to take with the c pawn and if you take with the e pawn then well I guess h6 is a good move looks better than taking on c3 without provocation and now I feel like this b5 move is really nice so normally what I would do is just 
write the line of the computer very quickly and uh, so for example here I would stop write something like unclear on co or counterplay and um, yeah then I move backwards and I mention the main line which is castles and now and only now do I take on c3 forcing b takes because g7 is not hanging anymore in the case of queen c3 and uh, yeah now ed ed bishop g4 is the main line and uh, bishop f5 is another option just mentioning these two things and i think like the critical line normally speaking is bishop e3 in this position from what i understand and remember and yeah it might also have been recommended by uh, i believe maybe um jan gustafsson but i might be wrong so anyway uh a3 and uh, for the moment i didn't make any mistakes uh from the objective uh, point of view now castles so as you can see i'm checking for the improvement this was just mentioning the main line in order for myself to remember it better now d takes e6 f takes e6 knight f3 seems like so far i've been finding all the decent looking moves and uh well bishop b7 and uh, queen f7 looks look good enough so i'm not gonna it's just a blitz game i'm not gonna spend like five minutes on every single position because uh i feel like i only want to improve one point of the game but actually when i think about it this is the point because at this moment i kind of play the best moves so i want to play to continue playing the best move so bishop b7 is the move that i should probably choose uh, rather than queen f7 give a quick line so for example e5 probably the move i was not really happy about and the point is that i can probably just be greedy and uh, I'm curious if I can take on g2 first probably it makes not uh, much difference I have to take so it looks scary but from objective perspective this position should favor black so for example I'll just write bishop f5 equals plus and then I'm happy I know my improvement and then I'm just blunder checking if I made any really ridiculous moves so now as I'm creating this video I realize I could probably feel myself like doing this process and also release it as private videos for those who are going to uh, enter the tier of the $30 with the with the private uh, let's call it with the computer analysis I don't if I'm going to do it anyway so i might as well publish it pu privately for uh, for those who already received the database and um, i know some of you might think it's a good idea for me to do it publicly and share it with everyone but um, well i'm not really intending to to do opening related uh, content for free at this point on my channel i might do it in the future but i feel like uh, it will, it's like the main thing that I spend my time on and that if I'm sharing it with the world so uh, I feel like it's a good idea that uh, it will help me reimburse some of my expenses so hope it makes sense and you don't think I'm too greedy and uh, anyway I just don't see any blunders for the moment of course some moves are inaccurate but you see I'm just going through the game also refreshing it in my mind I see I can sense all the emotions surfacing yeah and well I can also look at the position I don't have to see the engine on every single move and I'm just able to see that there were no big mistakes taking place by me so far um, so this is an example of something so far I mean of course not perfect but 
there was no point to to mention too much and here for example king e5 was allowing him to equalize so i should probably mention that whatever king g6 with the idea that after knight c3 i have this amazing idea of knight wherever <laughs> and uh, unlike the game uh, it doesn't have this really nice tactic where he is threatening um oh yeah the knight is simply trapped on on c4 because um i don't have a square simply after knight d6 i just lose it with bishop f4 and uh, he is okay and after knight f3 he will just get this move bishop b2 he was honestly more afraid of this knight takes a2 idea but anyway uh, king e5 was grabbing the square of the knight so as you can see i just mentioned a better move and i'll just put the evaluation so i have to admit that uh, if nobody uh, would be interested in this tier then i will not put evaluations because i don't really need them uh, in my opinion i mean just to see the position is good enough to see that this is a better move it's better to use your brain than to trust the computer evaluation when looking at it in the future so i'm thinking also for the viewers it would be a good exercise to, to try to understand why uh, in fact these positions are good and what is the evaluation if you could get it on your own it would be nice just trust me that whenever i put a new line for my side of the board then i'm just uh, adding some form of uh, an improvement and uh, yeah try to figure out the evaluation and and what's the difference from the move in the game if you could actually analyze those games even though it's blitz i feel like it can help you improve and then and for, I, mean, I mean especially in the opening and for those who like some of my openings you can also use the filter function and find openings that you like and uh, improve your understanding of these openings and this way uh, i feel like uh, learning from my mistakes can be much easier than than experiencing you know, pain and mistakes of your own so uh, it just feels like a good idea in general so the opening part i think is the most can be the most uh, influential uh, on everyone's game so king f6 rook takes a2 rook takes knight takes so far nothing really happens i mean I go through the game in its entirety and it's now I suddenly lose so I realize I'm losing so I realize that my mistake was done with this somewhere around here yeah where did I lose the pawn actually probably yeah around earlier so knight d6 was a big mistake from practical point of view so king e5 was the move I'm just mentioning it not spending too much time on it just like to understand what my big mistakes are and uh, somewhere around here he made another mistake so f6 was a huge mistake so when the opponent blunders so severely I like to mention it so this is just winning for him instead I don't have to understand why right now but I get it intuitively so excuse me for not explaining yeah, now bishop f8 I guess it's just this position is just equal so king e6 was a mistake because king h6 so you see I'm just mentioning some blunders and hoping it will improve my intuition one way or another and um, well now I'm suddenly winning and uh, obviously it worked in my favor in the game i managed to trick him and then i press i can press ctrl r to save uh, with the keyboard or i just press next game and then it asks me to save and i press yes but this method is risky earlier i pressed no by accident and it just ruined everything and i and i did the entire game from scratch because i want you to have all the games so it was a bit frustrating and um, yeah so i'll do one more uh, for this demonstration and uh, I can't wait to to see uh, how people will react to it because I feel like this is the first time I'm letting people in 
to some of my opening uh, related work, which is kind of my sacred uh, place. Uh, if I had a religion, this would be like, uh, let's call it uh, the holy part of my work where I pray. <laughs> so I don't know if the metaphor makes sense, but um, I feel like openings are my biggest passion when it comes to chess and not because uh, they're the most fun, but just I chose to focus most of my energy on this field, believing that this is what will help me become a very strong player one day in the future. And I know many people think it's not that important compared to other things, but my agenda is that the openings and the understanding of the opening and tactics and middle game of these structures can be extremely important. So uh, I invite anyone who likes the things that I play on certain openings to to copy and to mimic my choices and maybe even follow the same things it's not necessarily the best options but i know they are the best for me and i'm kind of a perfectionist so before i choose a line i kind of take a look at almost all the lines i can find and uh, just try to decide which one is best for me objectively which one is best practically and like before i decide on these real openings that i play there is a lot of time and thought put into it, so I feel like my repertoire is uh, worth uh, uh, mimicking if compared to other repertoires that you tend to see online. Um, so mm, this is just a side note that I wanted to mention. And um, well, I really believe in my openings and if I, it wasn't clear before, the blitz is my form of uh, of practicing my own openings on top of other things and my idea is that uh, that in a way i have nothing to hide i don't think my opponents will prepare for me from to me from these videos and uh, this is why i allow myself to share basically publicly all of my choices in the openings and uh, I, I, I attempt to play my real openings 100% of the time when I'm playing blitz or longer time controls technically I would love to do it in bullet if I could but it's more difficult so don't know if it was the most precise but as you can see white is still better and it seems like uh, I haven't done any big mistakes in the other kind I really like this line for white. I think it's a very sophisticated move order that I played in the opening that uh, took me a few years to, to, to let's say, decide on. And now, I guess for KD1 is not the most precise because it allowed D5. So I'm gonna mention Knight F4 as the improvement. And I'm not only looking at the engine here, I'm also looking down over here there is so this is Stockfish 8 you see Komodo was also recommending something but I'm comparing the depth here and actually the one that you don't see 23 here so I tend to lean towards Stockfish when it comes to recommendations like this and now I suddenly see A4 is stronger so I also mentioned both so you can get a mix of ideas in a way and uh, I believe that you don't have to make the ultimately best move as long as you make a strong move in positions like this because uh, there's no way of guessing which one is more human and will pose more problems and so on so these kind of differences are not that significant when you already have an edge but neither four I mean if you if you manage to prevent d5 in a, in a eff effective manner then I mean, you, you have an advantage, don't dare to complain. And now this is a nice move, g4, preventing knight f5, and I can write plus equals. It's a very hefty plus equals. And then, once again, finish the opening part, I move on to the blunder checking, and I'm just going on very quickly. I don't even look kind of, or try to understand the position. I have kind of the, the raw memory in my mind of what happened and here I was very frustrated that I cannot take on d5 I 
because of c6 and knight f3 check yeah, and then like i was fighting for my survival and all of a sudden my opponent like played this ridiculous move g5 giving back the pawn so since it was a blunder as i just mentioned the 96 was better probably earlier there was another improvement no okay probably okay just like to yeah he played well but this g5 move was ridiculous the 96 i can also mention minus plus uh i'm not very motivated to to give the evaluations if if nobody will be interested but i have the feeling that at least some of you might like uh, my attempt to share my some form of my wisdom it's not my wisdom but it's like you know my labor and my choices with the world uh, it's very personal in my opinion and this is one of the reasons i don't want to just give it to anyone i feel like those who appreciate me uh, and want to support my journey uh, i'm more willing to to kind of uh, give more back to them i hope nobody is insulted uh, yeah sharing my opening secrets is not uh, something that is too obvious so here as you can see white is suddenly winning he just gave up another pawn so i'll mention the mistake around here so this move rook d8 was okay still this move was the blunder so he could still have played queen d5 forcing f3 and then a very nice like he has very <laughs> like 10 very nice moves just for for the sake of example i give queen a2 i don't have to give all the lines and i can write unclear and after knight g6 so this is already very good for me it's quite clear that it's a pawn up i don't think i need to mention uh, an evaluation and uh, you see it's already plus three again i'm not like going to be too picky between plus four and plus two as long as I, nobody is blundering i'm feeling okay and here resigned so i'm gonna press next game press yes let me know if you like this type of videos uh, and you want me to do more of them they will be private because uh, as i said it's very personal and i don't want to uh, just uh, share it with everybody uh, I'm not a salesman, but it will feel like some form of selling myself short because this is like every like if you could like extract the other than the philosophy of course and the skills like the main asset, the main product of my labor in the past ten years is my opening choices and my analysis and my understanding of the opening. So I'm willing to share it and uh, for the mere price of uh okay okay it's so not sharing it i'm not sh it's just sharing some form of my work on it uh which is one of my <laughs> several secrets on the topic i'm willing to share it uh with those who will help me reimburse uh, my expenses for tournaments and uh, yeah this video is uh i just put it public just for the sake of uh, let's say marketing this tier and also as a, some form of apology for those to those who um, who expect a newsletter even though I committed to it I don't want to get around to it I want to keep working on openings and just for the sake of your understanding of how much work I have to I, I'm going to do each day regardless of this I'm working many hours every day and this is why I only get to streaming at night but like um, so just so you understand what what I'm going through um, with this part and why I don't want to spend time writing uh, which I don't believe directly improves my chest is uh, that look I don't know if you can read the number but right now I'm get on game number 95 out of 281 so far and i'm intending to continue streaming this month so i'm predicting i might even reach 400 games by the end of the month all of them will be annotated with some computer um 
suggestions in the openings. If I create videos, they will be private and I will uh, send them to my patrons on a $30 tier um, or more, of course. And I just want to mention that uh, it's not like this cost $30. This kind of tier, which I think, I mean, I would be excited to receive such a thing, um, is only $5 technically, because um, for the first $5, you can say even 10, because for the first $5, you get the database. For, the, for $10, you get a paired for the banter blitz. For $15, you get a Google, hang not Google, but a monthly hangout. I'm probably going to do another private stream that's going to be public later. For $20, you're going to get a group lesson, a one-hour lesson with me in a group. It's probably going to be a very small group. You can ask questions. I'm going to give you some tasks to solve. I'm going to teach some topic. Um, for $25, you get to play a simultaneous game against me uh, once a month. There's going to be a stream every single month for each one of these tiers. And for $30, you're going to get this database with um, all the computer analysis plus all the previous rewards. So each and every one of these streams includes all the previous rewards. I'll make a separate video explaining all the tiers and what's going to be in them. The newsletter, by the way, will still exist in some form, but it will be for free and I'll send it to everyone at my own pace and it will describe my journey in text. But only when I feel inspired, I'll probably write it like um, when I have free time uh, on my on the road, like let's say to tournaments and so on. I might just spend my time writing it and uh, it will feel like I'm not wasting time i could be working so um this is my idea and uh, i hope you like it i'm really eager to hear what you think about it and i feel like uh, it's gonna be very helpful for my uh, improvement if uh, many of you will give me a hand on this topic and i'm i'm honestly trying to reconstruct it in a way that will give you more value than the money, assuming that you want to improve your chess. So one last thing I'll mention is that my plan is to do these four streams. I mentioned four streams on the, on the 10, 15, 20 and $25. So quickly I'll mention banter blitz, hangout, which uh, hangout means kind of Q and A. Uh, so, Banter Blitz Hangout uh, group lesson and simultaneous. I'm going to do each one of them uh, from on each Saturday of the month. So my plan is to start on the first Saturday of each month with the simultaneous part. So I start with the more expensive tiers and then the second Saturday will be the group lesson which will be probably the only stream who's going to remain private because otherwise what's the point of for those who are paying for it uh, it might be released at a later occasion i'm not too sure about it but uh, i will definitely like to share it at some point as long as those who paid for it will not feel like they are cheated um, from their investment and uh, the third sa saturday of the month it should, should be on uh, 9 p.m israel by the way 21 so it's like 20, 20 so it's like 19 utc if it makes sense but uh, the third stream as i mentioned will be the um google hangout well, I'm, I'm saying google because hangout goes well with google but I mean, it probably is going to be YouTube Hangout, Q&A, or just some random nonsense, like the way I like it, <laughs> uh, talking about some topics, maybe getting philosophical, maybe whatever. Uh, and the last but not least, the last Saturday of, of the month will be the stream where I do a banter blitz. And each one 
of the streams, depending on the amount of people that I'll have, is uh, planned to be between an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, and uh, usually I aim for an hour, but if I see that it takes longer and I have the, I can afford the time, then I'll let it, uh, you know, uh, let it slide, as they say. And uh, yeah, I I honestly feel like it it can really help people improve and it's like a win-win-win because the viewers can improve their chess even more I can have uh, more money to uh, reimburse my expenses which are very expensive and uh, on top of these two things maybe the most important one that brings us all together is my channel and it's gonna have more quality content and more often and uh, as a result uh, it will just be better and maybe even be more uh, let's call it popular as time goes by which ultimately will lead me to doing more cool things on the channel as I mentioned I do want to share my openings and do uh, teaching related things but I want the crowd to be bigger and I want myself to have achieved my goal which is to enter the Israeli team while being in the top 100 chess players in the world so uh, I hope this video is uh, not too overwhelming for you uh, and uh, I hope that you understand more or less where I'm coming from and uh, well honestly I think the the more expensive tiers are for for those who really want to, to uh, let's say, be mm, personally shown on the channel, I forgot the word in English, like uh, if they want the name and to hear your voice maybe on the channel in some form or your game. If you, so, but if you really just want to improve your chess and you don't care about having your name or or your own experience shown in one of my videos personally uh, for sure let's say then and you don't mind being part of the of a group then I feel like the $30 tier is really something that's gonna be worth your investment and if it's not, please let me know. I really want to know and to improve uh, my tiers. I'm trying to make them accessible for everyone. And uh, I want to achieve a combination of, of reimbursing my expenses while doing my best to, to help out as many people as possible with the chess, uh, which is something that uh, seemed to have happened by accident from letting you guys in on my journey through this camera and uh, streaming and recording so I, f I feel like this adventure is slowly becoming more and more out of hand and I really enjoy having this stage and my voice heard so this is nice I hope uh, you'll choose to join uh, my patrons in one way or another and um, well there was one more thing of mo one more thing I had on my mind, but I'm always improvising, so it's hard to keep everything uh, intact. So I'll take a moment to try and remember. Mm. Well, yeah, the I got it. So this month will finish in one week, and those who choose to to um, join the Patreon rewards usually will uh, get it only by the next month so I'll try to explain the details you will be charged at the first of each month so if you were to sign up to Patreon now you will be charged on the first of April and you will receive the rewards for April but because I wasn't aware of it when I started the page and I received much more support after the beginning of March and uh, I guess people were not aware that they will not be billed by the beginning of April so 
And my offer is that either those who joined Patreon already and just didn't join March or those who didn't and want to catch the March reward because I obviously played many, many games and I didn't do the streams yet. So it's not too late. Like the stream, the first stream might be this Saturday night. So if you feel like it, then I, I would suggest to, to join, uh, but not through Patreon because it's just not possible to do it uh, on this month. So, but do it through the link below. So there is this uh, PayPal link that I put for my on-screen notifications. So you can just do it randomly now or even better, if you catch me streaming uh, at some point, okay, probably now is a better choice because there are not, there's not so much time until the stream uh, the group lesson on Saturday night, but um, if you do it now, then you there will not be a notification. And I just want to mention that those who will give me tips during um, my streams, on aside from the from the music and the, all the the nice vibes around it, uh, I will also include you in the Patreon rewards if you wish so. And uh, it's much more organized through Patreon, but if you do it this way, then uh, it's also fine. So I will leave the link in the description if you want to join the one on March, because otherwise this database will not be accessible. This one with approximately 400 games to my uh, evaluation. Um, and I honestly think it's going to be really cool. So just uh, if you feel like it's a good idea, press the link. Any amount between 5 to 30 will land you at one of those tiers I mentioned. If you don't remember what I said and don't want to look up where I said it in the video, you can also check the actual Patreon site. I will add the link in the description as well. And you can see the tiers right there. I actually just came up with this idea. So I didn't really, um, I didn't really prepare the actual tier for, for the $30 on Patreon itself, but it will be ready within a few days after my tournament ends. And, uh, in, a, in two days and uh, in fact I'm going to do the stream the group lesson right after the tournament so it's gonna be a busy weekend I hope you're enjoying this experience that we're having here and uh, I'm really excited about uh, what the future holds I really really feel fortunate to have this chance to help so many people improve their chess while actually improving my own chess. It's so amazing. Everyone improves their chess and like nobody cares. <laughs> it's just fun. <laughs> it's amazing. This channel is just, I'm so grateful for having uh, a friend suggesting me to open it. So yeah, this is nice. The link is below. See you hopefully in the stream on Saturday night. And uh, well, as I always like to say, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it or at least enjoyed watching it. And if you want to learn some more, then keep watching the next videos.